Okay, so let's walk through how uh, it looks in Python Tutor. So we can really see the solution, uh, you know, create uh, function scopes, right? And you can watch it really happen in Python. Okay, so let's just kind of go forward. We're creating that list comprehension. And then um, you see that what gets passed into the merge sort algorithm is reversed. So it is a reversed list. So we're gonna sort it. We want it to look like this at the end. Okay, so, um, you know, the length of nums is not less than one, so, uh, or is is greater than one. So um, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is our bisection. So here's our first bisection. Um, now that we've bisected, what we've done is on line eight, we've called merge sort on our left. So that's, uh, that's this one. So if I sort of click on it here, that's this one, okay? So then uh, you can see that nums is pointing here, okay? So um, what it's gonna do is further bisect everything, if that makes sense. You see how we're further bisecting? We, we split nine and eight off from seven, six, five, and then uh, we split them further down into one. And so now we've created a list of length one and once we get there and we call here left merge sort right um it says okay if the length of nums is greater than one and oh it isn't so now it's just gonna return this sorted list um okay so then we're returning nine it's sorted all the elements are in order and so now we're gonna call that same thing down here and we're going to return eight. Okay, so now we have two sorted lists, nine and eight, that are a list, but they've only got one element. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see while the length of left is bigger than, you know, zero, right? Uh, if left at the zeroth element is greater than right at the zeroth element, we're going to add into our sorted list, and you can see we're in this function call. And our sorted list, right now it's empty, but we're about to call append, so watch it change. Okay, now it's eight. And now we're gonna check, and left is empty. So um, we're gonna just leave our while loop. And now we have sorted list.extend left and right. And so uh, our sorted list, which is still here, is gonna be extended by the left list. Right, and I, left list is the one that still has something in it. Right list is what was empty. So we're gonna extend our sorted list by that left list. We're not gonna change the left list. Uh, and then we're just gonna extend it by right, which is empty. And so now that's sorted. And so we're gonna return that sorted list. And that sorted list is eight and nine. So it's a sorted list. So this will happen again for seven, uh, six and five. Uh, for seven, that'll just get returned. So this uh, seven was the left instance. So now we're gonna bisect the right down to two. You'll see, six, then five. And then we're gonna um, finish those function calls, right? Returning the sorted list. And now, um, you know, uh, we're calling again. Okay, and so now we've we've you see how this arrow is here and it says that we just ran this that returned you know six or a seven down here right or six or a five or something so uh, now we've got this other empty sorted list and so you can kind of see we're in this uh, we've created sorted list so if I hover over it and I click on it you see that it's empty it lives right here under this five so then um, let's see can I use an arrow no um, okay, so then you can kind of watch em this sorted list. The five list got emptied. And so now six is being concatenated, you know, sort of extended there. Um, and then now we have this sorted list of five and six, right? And this sorted list of eight and nine. Uh, and a sorted list of seven, right? And so now five and six and seven are going to get joined together. Um, and so you see five, six, and seven are a sorted list. So you can kind of see these these going down and then sort of collapsing here, right? So then if you kind of 
run through it, um, you'll see 5, 6, and 7 get passed in to get joined with 8 and 9, right? So 8 was larger than all of the elements in 5, 6, and 7. Uh, so it never triggered it, so these all got added one by one, but then the rest of the list, since 8 is the smallest element in that list, just got tacked on to the end there. Okay, so um, once that happens, then we've got uh, 98765 is sorted, right, into this proper list. So this was the point in the, in the visualization where we went over to the other side of the list. So you can kind of see how that happens. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit um, so that you can kind of see. We're sort of, this is like our current list that we're working on. This list is still sort of hanging out, waiting to be sorted at that top function call level. But we've split this other list up into a bunch of different pieces. Um, and if you see down here, we've still got this other list, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and now we're starting to get 0, 1, 2. Um, and so, you know, you'll see eventually, you know, uh, it's struggling. It's drawing a lot of arrows <laughs> on the screen. Um, okay, so we're in this one, and so now 0 and 1 have been sorted, and 2 is about to get concatenated onto the end, so you can kind of see that happen, 0, 1, 2. Uh, and then there's a 3 and a 4, so it looks like we're about to snap a lot of things together now that we've gone and sorted them. So we've extended left and right there, so now we've got... Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and now I think uh, that's that's the other half of the list. So we've got these two sorted lists that we've broken down, and then uh, you see that we pop way up here, right, where nums was originally passed in. So we've kind of gotten to that last step, right, where we just executed this last uh, top-level function call of merge sort, and now we've created our largest sorted list. Right, and it's like down here somewhere. Uh, and then if you just sort of step forward, you'll see, you know, we're, we're appending zero. Uh, if we step forward a few more steps, you can see that we've appended one. Um, you know, and so we're just gonna keep checking if left is bigger than right. And it's going to be that left, uh, or that right gets appended pretty much all the way through, and then uh, the left one just gets concatenated at the end. So you can kind of see this if I click on sorted list and it stays, it's not going to stay for me. Um, but this is our sorted list, and so that's what our return value is going to be. So I can go down to the last value and it'll say return value, and it's pointing down here to this list. So that's how that works. Um, so I highly encourage you to step through this algorithm. And then I want you to try implementing it on your own. One of the easiest ways to implement something on your own to kind of get the, the muscle memory of the algorithm itself is to rewrite the algorithm but change all the variable names. Um, just change them to something that's kind of different. Do it one line at a time. Uh, and then try to execute your code as it sort of interstitially works, as parts of it work. And that'll help. Okay, so thanks very much.